Imagine if one day you woke up in a strange room, with no idea what time it is, where you are, or how you got there. Most of us would probably freak out, but when this unnamed manga artist wakes up in chains, his first thought is that he must have slept in. Taking in his surroundings, he finds very little in the dark and empty room, except for a tablet in one corner. Maybe he could use it to get online and ask for help, but the artist's hopes are dashed when a young girl walks in. Wearing a mask and a school uniform, she opens the door and announces that the only thing he'll be using that tablet for is drawing every day from now on. Once the girl has disappeared, the artist tries to look for an escape. The shutters are locked from the outside. He could use them to make noise, but he'd probably alert his captor before anyone else. The girl appears again, and this time she drops a tray in front of him, kicking it towards him with her bare feet. The artist says he has no appetite, very politely I might add. I mean, if any normal person was locked in a dark room and offered a tray of yogurt, jello, and about 60 different supplements, I think they'd have some questions, or at least be a little mad but the girl gives him no choice. She commands him to eat. So he gives in, taking a spoonful of the hospital style food while she just sort of stares at him like a creep. As if kidnapping wasn't bad enough, she decides to watch him from the slit in the door, making sure he eats every last bite of his meal. Still chained up beside the tablet, the artist has nothing better to do than wait for the next visit from his teenage captor. When she appears, she's surprised to discover that he hasn't drawn anything yet. As if that's a surprise. What do you expect an artist to do if you chain them up and feed them mush? He can't exactly make the next Picasso in conditions like that. He tells her that he's been feeling pretty bad lately and doesn't have any inspiration to draw. So, she suggests he draw her. Obviously, any manga artist has probably drawn high school girls before, but given an opportunity to observe his captor up close, he is not going to refuse. The girl is determined not to take off her mask, so he has to examine her other features. He takes note of every detail, her eyelashes, the shades in her hair, even the position of her moles. I would say it's creepy, but I guess he's got nothing better to do. For some reason, the artist is intrigued by her and starts to feel inspired. He begins to draw as she stands there, posing in the doorway. When he's done, he seems hesitant to show it to her. I mean, she has total control of his meals, his living conditions, and his life. He definitely doesn't want to anger her with a bad drawing. But when the girl sees it, she just tells him to take off his clothes. Great. As if things couldn't get any weirder, maybe she really did hate the drawing. A normal person would have put their foot down at this point and said enough is enough. But not this guy. When told to strip naked in front of his teenage kidnapper, his only question is about his clothes getting caught in the chain. Nice one, buddy. Way to get your priorities straight. The girl takes out a key and unlocks his chain. A little sweaty and nervous, the artist takes off his top. She's not satisfied until he's taken off his bottoms too, after which she leads him out of the room, still holding onto his chain. The poor guy is probably terrified, but she just takes him to the bathroom. Maybe this is his reward for finally drawing something. It sure seems like it once he's in the tub. She's even taking his clothes to be washed. I guess she must have liked the drawing after all. It is kind of messed up, and in more ways than one. But aside from the psychological implications of abusing his basic human rights, the artist stops to think for a moment. When was the last time his drawings ever made someone that happy? After a few days of confinement, he begins to remember bits and pieces of the days before his kidnapping. As it turns out, he's not being held in someone's sketchy basement, but the new apartment he just moved into. So that means he's being held in his own home, by some strange girl who somehow managed to break in and chain him up. This story just gets crazier by the minute. His captor has become more comfortable with him, and spends a lot of time just watching him eat. She asks him how the food tastes, as if it's gourmet cuisine instead of cold slop with a side of pills. He goes a little quiet, and she asks him what's wrong but he doesn't mention the whole kidnapping or being held against his will. Actually, he feels bad for taking advantage of the food she's providing for him. But his captor reassures him. Not only are they using his apartment, his bills, but also his credit cards, using the money from what she refers to as their bank accounts. The artist asks why she called them ours. That's his own bank account she gave him. And come to think of it, how did they even know his pin? The girl just tells him his birthday was public on social media, so it wasn't exactly hard. I guess that one's on him. Then she leaves to go shopping, leaving him to lie there in misery and think about all the ways she's flushing his hard-earned money down the drain. The next time he sees his captor, she is standing in front of him with her knife, asking him why he's so ungrateful after everything she's done for him. Disappointed, she raises the knife high above her head, no expression on her face. It looks like she's about to strike, when suddenly the artist wakes up in a cold sweat. It was just a dream, although reality isn't much more comforting. He turns to find his captor standing quietly beside him, watching him sleep while playing with a pair of scissors. 
you know, as you do. Her captor is terrified that his nightmares are about to be replicated, but she says she only wanted to cut his hair since his bangs are getting a little long. The artist is relieved, but tells her there's no need. He likes his hair just the way it is. Besides, it's probably not smart to let her get too close to him with any kind of weapon. The schoolgirl says he was making weird noises in his sleep, and asks him what kind of dreams he was having, so he's forced to admit that he was dreaming of her. Of course, he leaves out the whole psychopathic murdering part, but his captor is flustered all the same. Her eyes go wide, and it looks like she might be blushing underneath her mask. I'm not sure how someone can have so much modesty after forcing him to strip naked, but she does seem kinda cute when she's embarrassed. She tells him to keep control of his imagination, and then walks out the door without another word. Obviously, she thinks he was having a very different kind of dream, but I wonder who is closer to the truth? Somehow, the first week of the artist's confinement has come to an end. By now, his routine is pretty well established, and since his days are so dark and dull, he looks forward to every mealtime. It's understandable. After spending the day alone, it must be nice to have someone come and sit beside him while he eats, even if that person is his kidnapper, and the food is hardly edible. One day, he gets up the courage to ask if she doesn't ever cook food for herself instead of feeding him things out of packets. The girl says she's never cooked before, so he asks her to feed him something a little nicer in the future. She doesn't seem to understand, as if she thinks stale pieces of bread and jello are everyone's idea of a perfect meal. I mean, what's the point in carrying a kitchen knife with you everywhere you go if you're not going to use it? And judging by the noise coming from the kitchen the next day, I guess it's safe to say she kept her word. Before long, the artist's chain starts getting longer and longer with each new drawing he shows her. On the first day, he could only get about halfway across the room. Now he has a lot more freedom to move about. Then, one day he notices that the door has been left ajar. Curious, he walks over to have a peek outside and finds himself eyeball to eyeball with his captor. The both of them are shocked to be up that close, and the artist stumbles backwards. It seems like the both of them are only concerned with what's going on in the other's life. She was peeping in on him while he was trying to see what she was up to. Well, and maybe find an escape route while he was at it. He thanks her for extending the chain, and she says she wanted him to be able to get enough exercise. Apparently, she wants him to be as healthy as possible. Though I'm not sure how someone can pretend to care about your health if they tie you up in a dark room and only feed you pills. The artist is a little flustered and thanks her for her concern. Though even he isn't blind to the obvious flaw in her logic. After all, confinement itself isn't exactly recommended by doctors. The next day, he is awoken by more noises from the kitchen, but this time they come with a delicious smell too. He hurries to the door and sees her standing at the stove, finally making him a home-cooked meal. He starts getting kind of excited, as anyone would after a week of being served incredible food. But the longer he watches, the more he realizes that his request might have worsened his situation. Her knife skills are pretty poor, and while she's prepping the vegetables, the pot starts boiling over. I mean, she did say she'd never cooked before. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to subject himself to her cooking after all. When this nightmarish meal is finally prepared, it sounds just as unappetizing as the last ones did when hitting the tray. But anything has to be better than pills, right? Despite all the terror that comes with being confined, the artist has never experienced as much tension as he does when she presents him with the first meal she's ever cooked. As usual, she sits down to watch him ramping up his stress levels. I hope she doesn't still have that knife on her. He tells his captor she doesn't need to watch him to make sure he eats, but she says she's just sitting there because she wants to. Like, that's not creepy at all. And what did this high schooler make for him, you ask? Well, it's all the usual stuff you start making when you first learn to cook, only bad. Like, burnt and kind of inedible bad. But again, it still looks better than everything he's had so far. The artist takes his first bite, thanking her for the meal and trying his hardest to control his thoughts and emotions as he digs in. But it turns out, he doesn't have to fake a reaction. Somehow, despite all that mess and chaos in the kitchen, the food is kind of delicious. His captor seems just as surprised as he does, but he keeps chowing down, genuinely enjoying every mouthful. I guess after 10 days of yogurt, you'd pretty much enjoy anything with a hint of flavor. His captor seems pretty pleased that he enjoyed it so much, and even though she hasn't taken off her mask, the artist is sure he saw a brief hint of a smile. When she clears up his tray, the artist is feeling grateful, and weirdly kind of embarrassed. He still has this crazy idea that she's serving him for free, even though he's the one being held in his own home and she's using his funds to buy food. He thinks he'd feel better if he could at least help with the cleaning up, and moved back to the door to see what she's up to. That's when he spots a recipe book on the floor. Seems like she's been putting in more effort than he realized to cook for him. Seeing how hard she's been working to make him comfortable, he decides to pick up his stylus again, hoping to draw her and make her just as happy as the first time. And maybe forced confinement is good for creative inspiration, because for once he actually has a lot of ideas for manga. He moves to the tablet and starts sketching a draft for his own story, the tale of a manga artist being confined by a high school girl. Before he can get started, she suddenly barges back into the room, and the artist panics, trying to hide the draft he was working on. But the girl sees it over his shoulder, and actually she looks pretty pleased. She even walks off humming. 
Looks like she's finally going to be the main character, and all she had to do was kidnap an artist, commit financial fraud, and break into his home. Simple. Now that the artist has a project to work on, time starts going by pretty quick. Soon, he hardly notices the hours flying by, only realizing the time when his captor walks in with a steaming hot tray of food. She sets it down in front of him, revealing a slightly more appetizing meal this time, a homemade hamburger, rice, tea, and salad with only a few supplements. Clearly, she is getting better every day. The artist is impressed with how quickly she's improving, and thanks her for the meal. She watches him quietly as he digs in, asking if he likes it, and again he admits that the food is delicious, even managing a smile. His captor admits she's glad to see it, and feels like she's earned it because she worked so hard to make him yummy food. In turn, the artist says that he will have to work hard on his drawing as well, and she gives him a cute little smile from behind her mask and says she's rooting for him. Oh dear. It would be the perfect romantic setup if it wasn't so messed up. Stockholm Syndrome, anyone? After that, the artist's life begins to revolve around food and his art. Every day he wakes up, eagerly trying to identify what she's whipping up in the kitchen, and eagerly awaiting each dinner. One day she asks him to get the door, and walks in carrying two trays. This time she'll be eating with him. The artist is a little surprised, but the bigger shock comes down when she takes down her mask. He stops her before she can pull it off, asking if she's sure she wants to show him her face. I mean, she kind of has to in order to eat, buddy. The schoolgirl says it's not a big deal, but the artist has watched enough crime dramas to know that this can't be a good sign. The victims who see the criminal's face never normally make it out alive. But she tells him not to worry about it. Apparently, she made her mind up from the very start that she would show him her face no matter what happened. After the full reveal, the artist is too stunned to eat, so she tells him to dig in before it gets cold. I have to admit, it's kind of sweet that they're sharing their first meal together, even though one of them is still literally chained to the wall. By now, the two of them have established a kind of harmony in their routine together. The artist wakes up to the sound of her cooking and starts his day with some sort of training, trying to keep himself fit despite his confinement. Soon after he is finished, his captor walks in with breakfast, and the two of them eat together, though usually it's in silence. After breakfast, he gets a chance to sketch, using her as a model and working as long as his focus allows. When evening rolls around, the student leaves him to get dinner ready. On good days, it's about this time when the artist goes off to take a bath, though I'm not exactly sure what a good day entails. I'm sure it's pretty twisted. By the time he gets out of the bath, dinner is ready, so the two of them eat again, talking about nothing in particular. Then she goes to clean up, leaving him alone to sleep or do whatever else he can to entertain himself in his little prison cell of a room. With nothing else to do, the artist decided to make a Twitter diary of the day's events, with drawings and photos of his meals so he can keep a log of his experiences, almost like a messed up scrapbook. Although that might be some people's idea of hell, the artist doesn't seem to mind so much. The only thing that really bothers him is the manga he's working on. It's easy enough to use his captor as a model for the drawings, but when it comes to her character, he doesn't know anything about her, other than the fact that she's a criminal, obviously. She appears at the door again, announcing that his dinner is ready. When the two of them sit down to eat, he asks her the question we've all been thinking. How is she doing at school if she's home every day? The girl doesn't take it super well, but it is a fair question. I mean, she's literally always in uniform, yet she never seems to leave the house. Artist says he just wants to know more about her, especially since his life is pretty much in her hands. For a while, she doesn't say anything, and gets up silently to take their trays to the kitchen. But just as she reaches the door, she tells him her name, Konata. It's precious information, and a sign that she's beginning to trust him more and more. The captive artist is on one of his bathroom trips when he notices that something has started to change. Usually, he is led by Konata holding his chains and her scary kitchen knife, but these days, she sometimes forgets it. It sparks an idea, and the artist starts to wonder, what would happen if he lashed out? Deciding to test this idea, he yanks on the chain, giving his captor quite the shock when it slips out of her hands. She begins to panic, and without thinking, grabs a pen, stabbing it into his stomach. The artist falls backward, obviously in a fair bit of pain, but Konata is apologetic. Instead of scolding him, she offers to stab herself in the neck to make up for it. So perhaps she's not as easy to mess with as he thought, but at least she cares about him. After testing the reins, the artist feels her getting stricter again, watching him a lot more closely. Now when she takes him to the bath, they're back to knife point, so it seems like the risk he took has sent him back to square one. Although, things aren't quite the same as the start. While the artist is bathing, he is interrupted by Konata, who walks in wearing a bikini. And her mask, which is kind of weird, considering he sees her face every time they eat. Konata says she's decided to monitor him even in the bathroom, worried that he'll try something again. Her captive is mostly concerned about her clothing, but she just says she didn't want to get her uniform wet. Apparently, she doesn't trust him alone for even a moment, and will do whatever it takes to make sure he can't escape. But obviously, it's pretty awkward to have a teenage girl standing half-naked in front of you while you bathe, so the artist asks her to leave, promising to try not to escape so long as she gives him a bit of privacy. I guess she must still trust him a little, because Konata takes him at his word and leaves. 
The next day, he is working hard on his manga series, but beginning to worry that the content is a bit too much, he's basically writing about his own experiences, and based on what he knows of his captor, she's not exactly evil. The challenge is to make that come across in the story, and it doesn't seem like a challenge, I mean, she has still kidnapped him, and is holding him in chains against his will. It's kind of hard to make that kind of character look good. While he's furiously working away, Konata knocks on the door, announcing that dinner is ready. But when she sees how preoccupied he is with his own work, she quietly walks back out again. It's only later when the artist's stomach starts growling that he remembers he forgot to eat. She left his food by the door, and even wrote out a little good luck message and ketchup on his plate. So maybe he's right, maybe she's not so bad after all. After a long night working, he sleeps fitfully, and ends up staying in bed a lot later than usual. So late that night, Konata leaves his breakfast at the table, with a little note saying she's heading out. Which is a first, I'm not sure we've ever seen her leave the apartment yet. Maybe she's finally making use of that school uniform and heading to class. But the artist isn't so curious about what she's up to, because he sees this as his first real chance to escape. Any normal person would take it, but he's so invested in his manuscript that he doesn't want to leave just yet, and decides to think more seriously about it the next time he has a chance. She gets back while he's standing at the door, and walks into his room in casual clothes for the first time ever. The artist is floored. No, literally. Like he falls down on the floor. He asks what she was up to dressed like that, but she teases him and says it's a secret, or maybe it would have been if he didn't see the price tag hanging from her skirt. Anyway, as a punishment for oversleeping, he has to draw her in casual clothes, though I'm sure the artist doesn't mind. At this point, he's well on his way to developing a crush for his captor. Once they sit down to draw, Konata can't seem to stop fidgeting. Apparently, modeling for so long yesterday made her butt sore. So naturally, she assumes a far more revealing pose, lying down for him and spreading her legs. The natural position for artistic excellence, I assume. The artist is a little shocked, but it's not like he's gonna complain. The only issue is the art. He's not sure he can get away with something this explicit, and starts debating whether to include, you know, everything, or to leave some of it out. Either way, it's kind of nice to see that his captor dressed up especially for him, and is now posing seductively to catch his attention. At the very least, it means she must feel something for him as well. Konata suddenly announces that she's going to take a nap in that position, and tells him that if he even thinks about trying something, she'll stab him. Perhaps the feeling isn't mutual after all. The artist keeps sketching away, working like a crazy man on this project while Konata sort of just watches him. One day he asks if she gets bored, just looking at him while he works, but she seems to find him entertaining. Then, she randomly asks about his favorite food, and the artist tells her he really likes a Big Mac. Kinda basic, but to each their own, I guess. Konata raises an eyebrow, but before he can ask what that was all about, she leaves, slamming the door behind her. The next time he sees her, she's brought him half the McDonald's menu. A Big Mac, chips, salad, and the usual sea of supplements that she can't stop giving him. He's touched, and asks if she bought it just for him, but Konata doesn't really say anything. Then he realizes what's happened. She probably asked what his favorite food is because she wanted to make it for him. That's why she's so grumpy. I guess buying fast food isn't quite the same gesture. So, the artist corrects himself, suddenly announcing that when it comes to home-cooked food, he really likes a curry. It seems his suspicions were correct. Konata perks right up and walks off to make him some straight away. The only downside is he ends up eating curry for the next three days straight. Be careful what you wish for. All this time, Konata has been slowly lengthening his chain until eventually it's long enough for him to go to the toilet all by himself. Of course, he doesn't want to repeat of last time, or any more trust issues, so he always tries to knock before he goes, as a way of asking permission. One time, however, he doesn't get an answer, and is really too desperate to hold it in, so he risks it and rushes into the loo. Only when he's done with his business, the artist stumbles out to find Konata in her underwear in the hallway. He immediately apologizes, but honestly, that's kind of on her. He runs off, but she calls him back, suggesting that they take advantage of their little accident by doing a nude sketch which kind of makes it seem like she wanted to run into him like that. Konata seems totally up for it, but the artist is absolutely not. He tells her to leave her clothes on, but his cheeky captor only puts on her mask before posing for him. Mark my words, someday, this girl is going to be the death of him. The next day, the artist wakes up with a fever, which is hardly surprising, since he hasn't seen the sun in like a month, and most of his vitamins come from supplements. Anyway, Kanata seems really worried, and does everything she can to take care of him. She pulls out all the usual tricks, a wet towel on the head, and making sure he has plenty to eat. Of course, if we know anything about Kanata, it's that she won't miss any excuse to get up close and personal with her captive. She decides to feed him herself, ditching the usual tray and even cooling down the food before she serves it. But he's not the only one enjoying the chance to get a little cozy. The artist's face gets redder the closer she comes, and something tells me it's got nothing to do with the fever. After her attention and care, he recovers quickly, and soon he is back at his tablet sketching Konata in various familiar poses. The two of them have become very comfortable with the process, and by now the artist knows her figure almost off by heart. Due to their closeness, he decides to ask the question that has been on all of our minds throughout this series. 
Why does she always wear a uniform? It doesn't seem like she's going to school since she's always at home cooking or posing for him, so what's the point of playing dress up? Kunada doesn't take especially well to this line of questioning, so the artist tries to clarify. For the sake of his art, it would be good to have her in some casual clothes for some sketches as well. Sure, buddy. For the sake of your art. Never one to disappoint, Kunada gets straight to her feet and leaves the room. There's a sound of rustling and then a slam from outside, and suddenly she reappears in a cute goth outfit holding up her entire wardrobe. She offers to change into every outfit she owns, and commands him to decide which one is best. I'm sure her prisoner won't mind a little fashion show, but she never really answered his question. Is this girl actually a high schooler or not? The people want to know. The day after her fashion extravaganza, the artist is working out in his prison cell slash bedroom. He hears a lot of clashing and banging from the kitchen, and grows curious, so he opens the door for a little peek. It looks like Konata has a lot of different ingredients out, and is clearly trying to make something new. The artist points out that she seems to be in a pretty good mood today, and asks if she wants any help cooking. But Konata seems pretty happy getting on by herself, so he comes over just to watch her cook, chatting about his progress on the manuscript. After a lot of mess and hard work on Konata's part, her masterpiece is complete, and masterpiece is the word. The meal she has laid out on the tray today is incredible in comparison to what she used to make. There's gourmet meat, seafood and rice, and even a cute little cupcake. Since she's pulled out all the stops, the artist asks what's the occasion. She tells him to guess, hinting that this meal is sort of like her version of a present. That's when he suddenly remembers. Today is his birthday. Once again, I have to wonder what kind of drugs this girl has been slipping him. I mean, how does a person forget their own birthday? The next morning, something happens for the very first time since the artist has been confined. He is woken up by sunlight streaming into his room. He gets up to discover that the shutter has opened. Only a little, but maybe this is the start of more freedom. Another reward for how hard he's been working on the manga? When they sit down to eat, he asks Honata if it was her who opened the shutter. She says yes, because it's not healthy to go without sunlight. Which, like, she's not wrong, but she's been starving him of daylight for a month already. Isn't it a little late to be pretending to care about his health? The artist is surprised too, but mainly because he didn't expect her to be so lenient. Kanata points out that it's not wide enough for him to fit through, and since he promised not to run away, she's not worried. She then asks him why he hasn't tried to escape up until now. There are probably a lot of reasons running through his mind, but the artist just feels like he would make a better manga if he stuck around. Although, I'm sure his captor's constant threatening to stab him has something to do with it as well. But Konata is reassured, and seems to believe him, so she finally takes off his collar, and says from now on, he doesn't have to wear it unless she's asleep. It's a pretty big step for the two of them, and maybe someone who wasn't so obsessed with Konata would take it as their best chance to escape. But the artist genuinely wants to finish his manga, so it doesn't look like he'll be making a break for it anytime soon. One time, dinner runs pretty late, and there's no sound coming from the kitchen, so the artist sneaks outside to help her cook and finds Konata passed out. Since he doesn't see her sleep all that much, he decides not to wake her, and takes on the cooking himself instead. By the time she wakes up, he is already finished, and lands a tray of food in front of her. Konata is so touched, she practically tears up, and apologizes for making him cook himself. He really doesn't think it's a big deal, but she feels so bad that she demands he ask for some kind of request so that she can make it up to him. Since she insists, he decides to sleep on it, and tells her he'll come up with one by tomorrow. After spending a little time working on his art, he manages to come up with one. Konata is still pretty eager to make things up to him. When they sit down to eat, it's the first thing she asks about. She pushes him to go on until he comes out with it. He wants to use the request to ask for the truth, the reason why she's kept him locked up all this time. It's a pretty fair question. They've been playing this game for such a long time, but still he has no idea how he ended up confined to his own flat by some teenager who he's never met before. I think anyone would be desperate to know by now. But Konata doesn't answer. She quickly stands up, saying that she's finished her food before she walks towards the door. Realizing he's crossed a line, the artist apologizes, and suggests they just forget he ever asked. But before he leaves, Konata says she can tell him, it's just she thought he would have known the reason himself. What kind of cryptic answer is that? The next day, he can't find her anywhere. And soon, the artist is really regretting ever opening his mouth. He didn't really care about her motivations, and now that she's disappeared, he feels like the whole thing was a stupid idea. Her absence has hit him deep. Not only is he sad, but his art has been affected too. He can't draw when she's not around, and doesn't have any more story left to give. For a moment, he thinks about giving up, but decides that wouldn't be fair to him or Konata. If he gave up, the last month of drawing, cooking, and bonding would be for nothing. Instead of moping, he needs to focus. And if nothing else, staying busy with his work will keep Konata in the front of his mind. So he decides to knuckle down, promising himself not to leave the room until the draft is complete. Which is kind of ironic. As soon as he gets his first real chance to escape, he confines himself. Sometimes, I really don't get this guy. But he's true to his word. The artist does not leave. Even when the sun sets and his room darkens, he's still working away. The next day marks the end of an entire month in confinement. 
When he wakes up, he's still at his tablet, having passed out slumped over it the night before. But finally, the first draft is finished. Not having Konata around might have even sped things up, allowing him to focus on the story instead of getting distracted by sketching all day. Now that it's done, the first person he wants to see the draft is his captor, but she is nowhere to be found. Literally. There's no sign of her anywhere in the apartment. Even the old chain and padlock have been removed, as if they were never there in the first place. Is... is there a chance this guy dreamt it all up? He is at the edge of his sanity. Maybe this has all just been one manic episode. The artist starts to wonder the same thing. After all, it is kind of convenient that when he was having an artistic block, a cute high school girl locked him up and forced him to create something. Maybe stress caused one insane month-long hallucination. The only thing he was certain of was the smell of Konata, which he can just about pick up inside his room. He discovers his phone on the floor in the other room when it starts ringing. It's his editor, calling in to say that his new draft is the best yet, even though the artist is pretty sure he never sent it. Apparently, the editor received it in the mail, and is already keen for the finished manuscript. He's still trying to figure out how he could have gotten a hold of it when the front door opens, and Konata appears, dragging a suitcase. The artist is now completely freaking out. He still doesn't know why she disappeared, why she can find him in the first place, or if she's even actually real. But Konata is acting totally normal. She congratulates him on finishing the manuscript and promises to work with him until they get it published. So it seems like our unnamed artist now has more questions than answers, but at least he has a finished draft to show for the crazy trip he's been on. Tune in next time to find out what happens next, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more recap content.